Hey everyone, today we've got an Xbox Series X that took a beating in a recent storm. It still kinda works, it powers on, the controller syncs with the console, but there's no signal on the screen. I can still power off the console using the controller just by remembering the menu sequence. Which means that the console is partially operational and we need to figure out why there's no signal coming through the HDMI port. Usually in cases like this, my initial suspicion leans towards a broken HDMI port. However, considering the lightning strike that also took out the TV, there's a good chance that the problem lies with the HDMI retimer chip. This chip costs about 20 bucks, and to replace it you'll need a hot air station. But to prove the point that anyone with minimal technical knowledge can fix it, I've bought the simple heat gun for about 25 bucks, and you also need a basic soldering kit. I'll put links in the description below. This device has an airflow control knob, and two buttons for temperature adjustment. Set it to the max while keeping the fan speed at medium. And attach a medium-sized nozzle. I won't be covering the disassembly process, I have a dedicated video on that. By the way, I also have videos on upgrading or replacing the SSD, cleaning the cooling system and replacing thermal pads and paste. The links will be at the end of this video. Alright, here's the chip that needs replacing. But first let's check the HDMI port. It looks great, all the terminals are perfectly soldered, and I don't see any blown traces between the port and the chip. It looks like the TV took the hit, but some surge current still made its way through the HDMI to the console. Before removing the chip, take a note of its orientation on the board. Here's the dot on the chip, and usually there's also a dot close to it on the board, but this one doesn't have it. Now let's apply some flux around the chip, and then we can apply some heat. Wow, that was the most stressful and longest desoldering experience of my life. I had to basically put the nozzle directly onto the chip to melt the solder. I could definitely remove this chip faster with my quick 861 hot air station, but considering the price of this heat gun, I won't complain. However, if this tool struggles with such a tiny chip, you'll never be able to work with larger components. It's simply not powerful enough. Next, we need to remove this unladed solder with a wick. And then we can clean the surface. Now let's add a tiny amount of leaded solder to the pads, like so. Let's add some flux, and then place the chip in its designated spot. With a slightly slow airflow, to prevent the chip from flying away, heat the chip in a circular motion. When you notice the moment the chip self-aligns, give it a little wiggle and then gently press it down to push the excess solder from under the chip. Add a bit more flux and using a soldering iron, remove the excess solder and solder bridges from the chip terminals. Let's clean up all this mess around the chip, and then we can reassemble the console. Now the moment of truth. The console powers on, and as you can see, the problem with the blank screen has been successfully solved by replacing the retimer chip. The console works perfectly now. If you have a console with a similar defect and you feel confident in your skills, then try fixing it yourself and save some money on repairs. So I hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching.